this is going to be a demonstration of how to put together and how to use a basic audio kit for on set. So we got here in our bag the rolls. Four twenty two mixer. Here you can see where the headphones go. These are the input channels with their pan left right. Uh, this gives you a slate. Click on that and you can slate it. We'll show you when you get it all put together. This will give you tone. Let's test your batteries and then your headphone over here. Uh, this is more advanced things. If you have a, an output from your recorder, you can switch between your main things going through this and the audio going through the recorder. Uh, in the back, we have power. Turn the power on and off over here. Uh, you have the, the monitor input, so your recorder you have from your recorder. The main output left, main output right. Then here is the minus 30 dB in line. I usually have it on line when I'm going to a recorder. Uh, battery selector. So on the side, on each side, there are battery compartments two 9-volt batteries on both sides over here too. So it'll run on those and you can see each, I guess it uses 18 volts, the two of them together. Uh, then we have each of the inputs here for your mics. You can have up to four inputs. Each one has a phantom switch. So you can turn that on or off. Phantom power runs microphones, condenser microphones. Uh, you also have a low cut, which cuts out the, the rumble, the mic rumble. Uh, and then a trim on each one, so you can set the sensitivity for each. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to plug in a microphone to number one. It's a condenser, so we're going to run it off of phantom power. So that needs to be turned in like that. I'm uh, not going to do the low cut because I think we can do that in post. And then we're going to have an output, left output, that goes to the input of the recorder. The recorder, you say? Where is that? Well, inside the case, we have this Tascam recorder. It's four channels, but uh, it only has two XLR inputs which is perfect for having a mixer like this because you get left and right outputs. Uh, and in audio for film, you want to have mono sources. So you're not going to do a stereo mix. You're going to do multiple mono mixes. That's where that pan comes in handy. So this uh, runs on SD. Let me show you over here. So you have the SD card right here. Click on it, it comes out, 16 gig, I already, I'll leave the 16 gig card in there, like that. To turn it on and off is this button there, and then this hold, if you push that up, it'll just hold how it is. You can't record or anything like that. Kind of helps because if you bump something here while you're doing a, wrong, a long record, it will stop it. So you don't want to do that. Uh, headphone outputs. You also have a line output. This is where you would make a cable from this. It's a stereo uh, TRS, tip ring sleeve, a mini one that goes to a stereo tip ring sleeve uh, quarter inch on the mixer side. That's if you want to monitor what you're recording. Uh, so we'll turn that on by pressing that button until it turns on. And there it is, it's up there. So to get into format, you click on the menu button and then you go all the way down 
yeah, to others. Click on the big button to get there. And then you go down and system all the way down the bottom. Click again. And when you get into there, let's see how far down is it? All the way down again. So you can see it says format media. So you'd click on that and it would do a full, full format. If you do a full format, it takes a long time to do it. Uh, you can do a quick format or you can just initialize. Initialize goes pretty quick. Uh, that's what I do like that. To get out of the menu, you just hit the menu button until you get back to the main display. Now I've got this set to turn off after five seconds because it really eats the batteries. It runs on four AA batteries. Um, so there you go. So on the side we have inputs. This is left or number one, number two or right. And then you have three and four here as a stereo plug that you can hook other things into it. All right, so also in the bag, we have the microphone. It's a Rode NTG2 microphone. It's got the XLR connector. So the cool thing with this microphone, if you unscrew it, it's a AA battery in there, and it'll run off of that if you don't have phantom power. Uh, you need to take it out when you're not using it, though, because it'll run through that battery really quick. That's why I don't have one in there. I'm just going to use the Phantom from the mixer. And of course the wind jammer thing. Really cool. Uh, this is the power supply for the rolls. It even says roll right on it. It is a 12 volt DC. So let's plug this in. All right, the plug's over here, plug's right in there, boom, hit this power switch, and it comes alive. The lights kind of come on, they're blue around here. That's got power to it now. Let me come back over here. All right, now we got some cables. These are XLR cables, they're balanced. There's four of them in here. This is the part that goes into the microphone on both of these. This is the part that goes into the mixer. You can't really mess it up because they're made for one another. So we will plug in the microphone, see the three holes in there, like that, so that's plugged in. This comes down. We'll plug this into number one right here. Turn off phantom power so we don't need it. Goes right in there and clicks. There's a release up top to get it out. You press on that and pull out. It goes in there. Now we'll click on the phantom power, and that powers the microphone. Uh, so now you can see one, two, one, two. You can see this one right here because we have it left, because number one is panned to the left over here. One, two, you can see that bouncing right there. That means there's signal. Now with the other cable, we'll take the output, the left output, back here, since we have it panned left, and that clicks in. And there's a release up on top of it here that you push down on it and pull out. 
there's the pump. Now we take the other side and we're going to plug that into, you could plug it into any, I just make it consistent. Since I'm plugged into one left, I'm going to plug it into one left here. In there now. So that's all set up. That gives us the loop. Now we need to put it on the boom pole. Here is the boom pole. It's got a weird thread. It's not a microphone thread. It's a smaller than a microphone thread. So there's just an insert in this regular microphone plug. And we'll screw that on like that. Nice and tight. To loosen this up, you just loosen that and it pulls out, right? And then same thing with the base. So this will go to probably about eight feet, maybe more. So that's ready. The microphone clamps into that. Put it this way. Like that, you want it about halfway just so that it's nice and balanced. And we'll wrap the cable around a, a little bit like this so that you can get it banging or hanging into the shot. And then when you're going to mic, you're going to hold it as still as possible and not let that bang around, right? Now you can get a shock mount for this, which if you're moving around a lot could probably help. But a good sound boom operator will just hold this nice and tight and you won't get any bumps or anything like that. That isolates it if you got a lot of noise. Uh, so you want to hold this up above your head and come in straight like this. If you come like this, you'll probably see the boom in the edge of a, of a shot like that. So you want to get it horizontal and lift it up so that it's just out of frame like that. All right, so now we're ready to roll. You would extend this as far as you needed it. We'll start this up. All right, and you can see there's, there's, uh, it's bouncing there, the meter. So that's ready to go. So when we want to record, you get a good level by leveling it here on the mixer with the front you get the lever level going good so that it bounces just, just nice. Uh, usually you're going to have this pointing down at the chest area, you know, right around here where you talk. That gives you some good audio. Point it down towards the floor so that you don't get any interference like the train coming by right now. You're going to reject anything up above it since this has a hypercardioid pattern that pick up. So now we're ready to go. The director says, lock it up. Here we go. We're going to do it. Uh, is the camera ready? The camera says, yep, we're ready. Is sound ready? Well, you're ready here, right? So that's when you would push on the record button here. When you push on it, it starts blinking. That means you're in standby. You're not recording yet. You're in standby. Now they said, the, direct, the assistant director says, roll camera. Camera speed, roll sound. Now you press the play button. See how that turns solid? Now it's recording and you'll say sound speed. Then as you're holding this up, the first AC will come in with the slate and slate it. They'll say scene one, take two, marker, and smack the sticks. You want to be able to get that smack of the stick so that you can sync the audio later on. Uh, you can also use this slate button that I talked about before, right there. There's a little microphone there. So when you press on this, scene one, take two, you can record that directly onto the audio. So then you do your whole acting thing and everything. Director says cut and you press stop right here the stop button boom there you go that recorded our first one so next time they say camera ready yes camera is ready sound sound is ready you're ready to record roll camera camera speed 
roll sound, sound speed, action. Then the actors do their stuff. Cut. Sound is cut. There you go. All right, so that's the basic setup with this simple, simple audio setup. Very powerful. You can get really good audio with it. And you have up to four inputs and up to two outputs from the mixer. You actually have more outputs, but that's you can't control them like you can with the two outputs. Then you have two inputs on the recorder. You have four actual, but only two are really going to be used. Uh, you usually don't have more than one, maybe two microphones going at a time on set. And they're mono. So there you go. That's how you do it. Now let's take it all apart. I'm going to turn this off. Press and hold the power button on the side until it says, there you go, goodbye. Now we can unplug that, put it back in the box. We'll turn off the mixer so that we don't get any pops or clicks when we unplug things. Wrap the cables up. Always wrap cables in a, in a circle like this. You don't want a, a loop. You don't want to make it like this because that gives you weird bends in the edges. A loop is better like this. Uh, on the microphone, it's the same XLR thing. You press on this button up top and pull it straight off. Don't pull on the cable, pull on the sheath, right? Let's get this microphone off into the box. Oh, this, I always take this off because it's real easy for a boom pole to be laid on the wall. And if you lay it on the wall and it falls over, it'll fall into this and break it. So that comes off. That's good. Unplug this, pressing on the button. We'll loop this all up. Cables have a life of their own. They always get in knots. They are alive and they want to kill you, just like cats. Cats are more passive aggressive. Cables are more just aggressive because they will knot up and trip you, make you fall, and you'll break everything on set and it'll cost you $500,000. Or so I'm told. Uh, I keep these in sets, in bundles. Two cables hooked together. So that when I grab something, I know I always have a cable and a spare. Because cables always go bad. You can never have too many cables. Alright, this is off. We'll unplug that. This is cool. You can use this mixer. You just hang it around your neck. You can have that and you can mix things while you have your headset on. That's one thing I didn't put in there is the headset. Headset, see the cables? Look at this cable, look at this. these cables. Ugh. There's the plug for the headset to monitor. And you wanna plug that into here, right here, where it says headphone. Plug that into the headphone right there. That way you can monitor the sound that you're recording. Uh, the recorder also has a headphone. Where's the headphone output? Here it is. Headphone over here. So if you really want a really slim setup, don't need the mixer, you can go directly into this. Uh, you can hook it up to a belt here with these loops. And you can have the headphones coming out and just hit record and everything. It has a preamp built into it. You can go in and set phantom power for your thing too. You'd have to look that up. I never did that with this. When you put the headset back, don't wrap the cable around the headset because that will break it. Just take your cable and shove it into the head, headphone slot, and then the headphone just slides right into it. 
right there. That, put that out like that. That closes. This goes right in there. Side here too. There you go. Basic auto production.